There's nothing to worry about. I'm your number one fan. He just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Listen, asshole! No, you listen, you little bitch. You hang up on me again, I'll cut you like a fish. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? What an excellent day for an exorcism. I am Rocky. I am eternal child. I am the eater of wolves and of children. Live and in living color on the air. Nights of Horror Radio. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Happy Tuesday afternoon here at Nights of Horror Studios. We have a great show lined up for you guys today. All horror news based and whatnot. A um, little light on the haunt news this week so far. Uh, doesn't mean that there won't be haunt news to come out later this week. So... Stay tuned. We're going to keep up to date with the haunt news on our socials. You can find it all below right here uh, at Knights of Horror on X and at the Knights of Horror on everything else. So check us out on the um, good old social medias, the good old Twitter page, the good old Instagram page, the good old uh, TikTok page, and the Threads page. Check us out, and that's where you'll find all things related Knights of Horror. Now, we are... Uh, going to be we have a great show in store for you today we have a lot to talk about today a lot of great horror news to talk about today can't wait to get into it um and i cannot wait to uh talk about it there's gonna be a lot to talk about and um yeah looking forward to it and i got a special guest with me today looking forward to that a little reunion if you will it's been a long time coming man it's been a long time coming so it's gonna be good to talk with this person, again, very familiar face to the channel. We're going to talk with him in just a sec. But, uh, yeah, guys, happy Tuesday. So here's what's going to go down for the summer. Uh, I'm going to start booking more shows for the podcast, make the podcast return, um, as well as uh, you're going to see a lot more streams right here on Twitch, both video games and Nights of Horror radio every single week. Uh, and that includes, um, you know, it's going to majority... Yeah, vary on our schedules, but you're going to get an episode of Nights of Horror Radio once a week. Uh, next week, uh, we have a big episode uh, lined up as well, so stay tuned for that. You'll get more on that at the end of this episode. Looking forward to next week's episode as well, but next week's going to be a fun episode, and we have a lot of things coming up. Summer uh, break has started where I work, so I am now on the day shift, which means I have more time to do things in the afternoon. So, a lot of things going to be returning in the future. Um, like I said, going to get back on doing gaming streams. We're going to actually be streaming this uh, coming Thursday to uh, just some Call of Duty or something. We'll see what goes down, but uh, we're going to be streaming Thursday, so tune in on the channel for that uh, at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and we'll be streaming Tuesday on uh, right here on Twitch. On top of that, I'm going to be booking some more podcasts, and you're going to be seeing some podcasts come out on the Nights of Horror YouTube channel uh, very soon, so stay tuned for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to seeing what um, what goes down uh, and who we get on as guests. I already have a few names lined up uh, that I've reached out to uh, like previously, so I'm going to hit them back up and see if everything is uh, still good to go. But I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a fun summer, guys. I, I can't wait. We got Midsummer Scream coming up very quickly. Uh, and we're hitting Las Vegas at the end of the month. Now, I said that in May, and then an emergency popped up. So we are gonna we had to postpone our trip. Emergency got taken care of. Very, very thankful, very happy that it got taken care of. Um, and now we are going full force in about, I think, two weeks we head out. So it's going to be a fun one, and I plan on visiting the Area 15 site so we can take a look at that new uh, year-round uh, Horror Unleashed Halloween Horror Nights that's going to be in Las Vegas that's going to be built right in back of Area 15. Take a look at some construction updates. Uh, the, the building's pretty much all up. It's just now, I guess, doing all the interior, plumbing, electrical, all that fun stuff is the next stage of things. 
but that building is up and it's and it's and it's making fast progress of pictures that I've seen, videos that I've seen, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to that, you know, al- alone because it's it's going to be a, a great uh, project and it's going to make me want to go to Vegas more now. On top of that, the horror scene is already popping off there as it is. You got uh, escape rooms such as the Blair Witch, the Saw escape room. It's chapter one and two, um, you know, and all these different little pop ups that are kind of popping up more and more 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 experiences and whatnot they had a stranger things pop-up store in the middle of the strip that was a lot of fun got to experience that so i'm excited to see what becomes of las vegas in the next like five to ten years especially with it becoming more of the entertainment capital of the world and the horror scene having more of an influence in pop culture uh now more than ever so I'm excited to see what that draws uh, to us, and I cannot wait to see uh, what they have in store for this horror unleashed, what we're going to see. Are we going to get Universal Monsters? Are we going to get something Jordan Pill? Are we going to get Five Nights at Freddy's finally? I think if anywhere, that's the, the perfect place to debut the Five Nights at Freddy's is right there at the, uh, the, the year-round HHN because I feel like you can invest more money into making it a, a, a longer attraction for a longer amount of time. And uh, you can run tweaks and whatnot throughout the the running of it to see what the issues are and stuff. But I personally think the Five Nights at Freddy's, if it's going to go anywhere, Horror Unleashed in Las Vegas is where it should go. I think it would get the proper love there, and I think they would get the proper attention there. Uh, But that's just my thoughts on that. Yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting uh, next couple of, of years in the haunt world, and it's only getting bigger and better. Um, another haunt that I want to touch up on that I don't think a lot of people talk about, um, and it's a very great haunt. We got to experience it for the last, uh, for the first time last year at its old, now old location. That was the last year at their location. And that's delusion. I think delusion by far is one of the greatest things ever fucking created in SoCal. As far as a haunt goes, delusion really immerses the guest into the story that they're trying to tell. And they execute it very well i mean i had so much fun interacting and just already being in this house that it probably is haunted it gives off those vibes but then to add that horror element to it to add the story to it such a fun time um I, i'm very excited to see where they go next year or this year coming up because i know last year it, it, their their location in pomona was at like an old victorian house uh i think their their contract came to an end with that location so i'm excited to see where they take the story at next and uh how they design a story built around that location i think they did a really good job last year of of, of telling this story around this house and it was just like one thing after another. It was like you were, it was physical. Uh, there was a lot of theater moments. Like it, it was really, really something. I, I really enjoyed uh, the hell out of that, that haunt. And I, I hope, uh, I hope one, they return this year. And I hope that uh, they come back with something hitting hard again. Cause I, I don't think you can go wrong with the storytelling that delusion offers and, 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 builds upon you know i I believe all their stories kind of connect within this kind of bigger book of of short stories so i'm excited to see where delusion goes this year that's another haunt i'm looking forward to another haunt that i'm gonna definitely check out this year and and see what's going on um not scary farm obviously they they i think um they have auditions coming up really soon for um for monsters so if you guys are interested in trying out for for not scary farm get a time slot get in be a part of the family and remember it doesn't matter where you end up the end of the day you're there to 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 sell the narrative to sell the story and to just scare the hell out of people and just have fun doing that no matter where you end up i i i can't say that enough you know there are so many talented maze monsters there are so many talented street street talent and all together you guys are a team man everyone comes to see those mazes so you know you guys are the stars of the show these the street talent our stars as well. They're helping people stay, keep that adrenaline up so they can get you, get them to the next maze. But yeah, go try out, have fun. If, if you guys are very much interested in doing that, tryouts are now. Uh, I think goes the same coming up pretty soon for Dark Harbor. If not, they already had theirs. But uh, check out Dark Harbor as well. I know theirs are coming up pretty soon as well. So uh, you know, it, it's going to be cool. I mean, look around. I think, I think Halloween Horror Nights is doing theirs pretty soon or they already, they have done theirs, but 
keep your eye out because now a lot of these haunts are going to start uh, opening up to audition. So you're going to want to be a part of that. It's if you if you really want to be a part of this season, uh, now's the time to act on it. So keep an eye out on that. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, it's going to be a great show today. Um, hopefully, our special guest joins us in the Discord really relatively soon. Um, and when he does. We're going to start breaking down our first major topic, actually the title of today's uh, Nights of Horror Radio as to uh, The Conjuring returning to our screens, but but not the big screen. No, 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 no. They're, they're heading to the streaming world now. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that and get our thoughts and reactions on it right here on Nights of Horror Radio right after this break. Got a little Bury Them Deep. That's the name of the band, Bury Them Deep. With uh, their song Fixed Fate. And that's going on right now on Night's War Radio. Man, 
fixed fate. Bury them dead. Bury them deep, I'm sorry. Good song. Hope that got you a little hyped up right now for Nights of Horror Radio. There's the title track right there, now playing, or that was the now playing, but uh, Fixed Fate by Bury Them Deep. Check them out. Spotify. So, we got a lot to talk about as far as news goes today, man. A lot to talk about. And, um, you know, a lot of good stuff out there right now uh, in the horror realm. Uh, a lot of great stuff going down. And, um, man, you can, it, it's, it's no better time right now to be a horror fan than right now. Uh, I'm just saying that right now. It, it's just a lot of things are coming out, haunts to look forward to. But today we're going to focus a little bit more on the news side of things, starting with uh, something I found interesting. Howling into theaters this December, Werewolves starting stars Frank Grillo and will feature practical wolves from FX masters Alec Gills and Tom Woodruff, Woodruff Jr. The premise has been described as The Purge, but with werewolves. Immediately, I'm I'm sold on that 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 um that concept. I think that's a brilliant concept. Practical werewolves, the purge for werewolves. Sign me up. Rob's gonna be there opening night, I bet, because he loves werewolves, and he'll probably give it a, an amazing review, even if it's terrible, because it's werewolves. So, um, I I think I'm on board with that one, and I think I'm gonna have to check that one out. And Frank Grillo, great action star. So, if he's gonna be a werewolf. That should be vicious. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about The Conjuring, but I can't do it without my favorite, favorite person in the world. The original co-host, the man, the myth, the legend. Oh. Oh. Mr. Oh, well, okay, he left. Mr. Samuel Martinez was here right now. Maybe he's having some technical issues. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Samuel Martinez in the house. Go back to the chat until he gets back in. Um, see where it goes from there. I'm going to try to add him to the uh, audio cancel. I want to add him to the whatchamacallit. I want to add him to the um, there we go. This might work. Hopefully he comes back. Let me see what's going on with him right now. Let me see if he texts me. Anyway, we want to talk a little bit about Conjuring. You know, Conjuring is uh, a well-known franchise. Um, well-known franchise. And the fact that they're taking a well-known franchise like The Conjuring, something that was teased also a little bit at the end of The Nun 2, and bringing it beyond the big screen with Max, uh, that, that's, that's exciting. Uh, this has been teased. This has been rumored now for a few years. Um, I've heard rumors about this going as far back to like when they were doing like the Nun and Annabelle and all that. Like this is something, especially when HBO Max first launched. This was something a lot of fans wanted. This is something that I think could expand on the lore and story of The Conjuring and reveal more Ed and Lorraine Warren cases, which there were a lot more. And what we've seen in the in the movie so far is a little bit more dramatized, a little bit more, um, you know, more scarier. And I think that expanding on that that kind of, you know, expanding on that lore and expanding on that the, those stories, I think there's a lot to tell with this. I mean, you can easily, if you really wanted to, do like an episode of story. You know what I mean? And do like something very simple or you can focus multiple seasons on one story, you know, like do a season of story or something like that. I don't know. You could do a little like sub stories, kind of like Supernatural start 
a style that kind of leads into the big grander story. Um, there's so much you can do with the conjuring, so many things that you can introduce, reintroduce, because there's a lot of demons that they've already introduced that we've only seen very uh, slight versions of that they can reintroduce and expand on more. Crooked Man being the most iconic and the one that I can think of off the top of my head that they've been promising a, a solo movie on that for a while. Now you have the opportunity to do an entire episode or an entire season based around that. Um, and I think that's just incredible, to be honest with you, because, you know, there's, like I said, a lot you can do with the Conjuring universe. There's a lot you can do and and a lot we can see. And depending on the two main actors, if they're on board, we can see this go on for a while. We can see this spawn into different individual movies that tie in. Um, but like I said, if y'all watch The Nun 2, at the end of Nun 2 in the, in the post credit scene, spoiler alert if you guys haven't, but spoiler alert for the post credit scene of The Nun 2, we see Ed and Lorraine Warren at their house. They get a phone call. Something doesn't seem right. Uh, and they get involved in a new case with that being said. So... Sammy, are you there? I think so. Maybe. Hold on. Let me change my Discord settings real quick. Oh! Oh, gosh. Nice. I think I'm here. Uh, Hold on. Give me one second. Yeah, there we go. That's why. All right. You there? Now I am. You are. You are. Coming in loud and clear. All right. How you doing today, bud? My you are in living in color? live and in living oh, color. Look at, that. look at that. Robbie said he can see me. I didn't. I don't know. I've never used Discord, so this is. Or, well, I have, but I've never used it for live streaming, so this is weird for me. It's all the same. It's just joining in, and then I'm just streaming it off the OBS and all that. It's the same thing like we do all the time. I know, but I they they have everything labeled incorrectly for me on my computer on Discord. Oh, so okay. My mic has the opposite name. My headphones have a different name. It's. It's complicated. It's all the, uh, all the fun stuff, I guess. I'm not having a great time, but I'm having a good time. I'll tell you what. I like the Godzilla shirt. That's a, yeah. that's a classic. Thank you. I just this is what I was wearing to work today. So. I think George would be very satisfied with that one. Shout out to George, number one. Number one. George Whatever. finally saw Godzilla minus one. Did he? He did. It's on Netflix, right? Yeah. He watched he it already three times. He missed it in theaters, so he finally saw it in. What are you doing? I what am I doing? It's your fault. You should have taken him. You should have I, him <laughs> six times. I think it was like a limited release. It was. It was only out for a couple weeks. Yeah. I went and saw it. It was good. It's a good I movie. It. It's solid. I don't have Netflix, though, so I can't. I Thanks can't. a lot, Netflix Netflix password share. <laughs> no, I had Netflix. I just didn't want to spend like over 20 bucks a month. Yeah, this is going to be fun. I think this Am I is lagging? it's a Discord problem because this was happening to me last week as well. Oh. Well, I don't have to be on here. It's not the end of the world. No, it's okay. I just wanted to get your thoughts real quick on uh what you thought about. I mean, you sent it to me as well. The Conjuring Universe coming back, HBO Max or Max, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, great questions. What um, are your thoughts, really man? totally prepped for this conversation because i totally read the article i sent you i, I don't I, I don't need you based on article read i just want to hear your reactions because i know you're kind of a big fan of the conjuring universe and of course of the you know the nuns one character that scares the absolutely living shit out of you you know and and to kind of see more you know i was explaining there's so much they can pull from we haven't even seen the backstory of the crooked man there's so much they can do they can do you know like one big story and then little like sub episodes that kind of relate to the bigger story of different cases. They can go a bunch of different ways. Like what is something that you would love to see with the conjuring universe show? Yeah. Great question. So I know that they were supposed to be doing a crooked man movie. I, I had thought that was something I had heard in the pipeline for a few years, but obviously I believe those movies are distributed by uh, Warner Brothers and Warner Brothers has been kind of mixed up on, on where their plan of action is. So I don't know if that fell to the wayside. James Wan may have left. I don't know. There's a lot on that. Um, but if if it's the same team that's been producing, you know, Conjuring 1, 2, 3, uh, you know, your Annabelle's, your other things are part of the uh, Conjuring universe, then, I, then I'm excited for it. What I would like to see 
um, is obviously there's a lot of artifacts and history that go into the uh, Warren's collection. Um, so kind of going through a little subplot would be pretty sick and like various artifacts um, and, and, and how those came to be. Um, and, you know, I know that the estate of the Warren still exists. I believe it's like one of their son, um, son-in-laws or whatever um, now holds record of everything. Um, so I'd be excited to see if maybe they can do something alongside them, like with like the various items in their collection. And like you had mentioned, maybe having like a couple different episodes, maybe it's an eight season arc, but like there's one overarching story, but along the way they may have little subplots of uh, the artifacts that they collect. Yeah. Um, which would be pretty sick. Or even if they do it just based upon like one thing and they make it like a very in-depth story, um, that would be super epic. No, oh, I so, agree 100%. And did you watch Nun 2? Uh, I have not seen the Nun 2 because I refuse to watch any horror film by myself in the theaters. Um, uh, so, uh, as you know, as uh, if you've been a longtime viewer of the Nights of Horror, you know that I commonly do that as I watch horror films. And it's a lot worse if you're doing that by yourself or if you're doing it very alone in a theater. Uh, there's a lot of times where I'll look at a theater and there may be one person or, or two people in there. And I don't really find a comfort um, being alone in a horror film. I'll go watch a rom-com by myself, an action movie, a comedy by myself. But something about a horror film throws me off. I had the heebie-jeebies the first time I watched The Conjuring 2. And I was in the first row just because there was no escape on that. Um, so being in a theater alone, too, count me out. It's the best thing ever. Yeah, no, I like being in a, like, I don't mind being in a theater alone for any other film, but a, a horror film, no. So, like, <laughs> The Strangers Part 1 is if you're, a, once again, if you've been a longtime follower of the channel, um, The Strangers is probably my favorite horror film of all time, just because it's the scariest movie, not because of, like, jump scares, because it's the most realistic film, because the entire motive was because you're a home. And what do 99% of us do? Sit at home at least at least for some point in the day. And so you will never catch me in a remote area alone because I know that those foods are coming for me. Which is kind of funny because, like, I know you live in a town, but right behind that town is a very remote, dark area. And so that alone right there for me would scare the shit out of me. But, you know. So also think um, like not current, not in this current climate, um, just because it's the summer and the yeah. summer is quite warm. Um, but w I like to run, um, and so during the winter I was running a lot in the morning at like five six a.m. and it was completely dark. That is my worst fear. I hate it. <laughs> it's like if you remember in the first uh, Stranger Things film, I know where I'm oh, not Stranger Things, but this first Stranger's film, I'm a, I'm a, my mind's a little all over the place. My apologies. <laughs> first Stranger's film is they're basically just driving along the highway too at the end of that movie, so they can catch me slipping. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't think they. I don't think they've made it to Arizona, so you're good. That that movie, that place. There's literally no description of where that movie takes place. It could be West Virginia. It could be Utah. I'm gonna go like Utah. Like I'm going more foresty places. Like you didn't really catch. Like out of all the Strangers movies that I, I haven't seen the new one yet, but I've seen the first one and, and the second one that they did, um, Pray at Night, I believe it was called. And yeah, the was, Pray at Night. was that a trailer park? Yeah, but like those don't look like an Arizona climate to me you know what I mean because Arizona's all desert so you can you really could you would really know the climate based off looking at it like oh that's either like Nevada or like Arizona or something you know so yeah you're right the second movie I think takes place in like I don't know it's some like um summer place because I believe they go in the winter right I don't remember it's been a long time since I've seen Pray at Night but nonetheless you won't catch me in a going back to the nun too you nope. won't catch me in a theater alone alone <laughs> Watching that movie. I, I don't know if it's on Max yet. I, I haven't looked. All right. According to The Howling Hour, the, the the new one for The Strangers takes place in Oregon. Oregon. Not too far. I mean, Arizona's a little far from it, but it's the next state up from California. And my grandma lives in fucking <laughs> Washington. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. Uh, I mean, yeah, no, I, I think, uh, well, what I was getting at with the nun too, and if you don't mind real quick, I, and I did a little spoiler warning earlier, but a little spoiler warning for you, 
everything, but like none two had a post credit scene. And in that post credit scene, you're we come back to the Warren house and we see the daughter, we see uh, Ed and Lorraine. Uh, the phone rings and Lorraine uh, picks it up. Or no, the daughter picks it up, says it's for uh, Ed. Ed grabs it and it sounds like an emergency or sounds like something's going down. Um, and they kind of have like a worried, like kind of scared, shocked face on their on their faces, and then it kind of just goes black. So that right there obviously sets up for what we're gonna probably see in the show, whatever the story may be with the show, whatever demon they decide they want to, you know, try to exercise, uh, whatever is coming after a family. I don't know how they're gonna go with it. Like I said, I know a lot of people are fans of the Crooked Man, so an example would be like if they could do a one-off episode of like how that became a thing and how that came to be and the origins of that and just to kind of give them their their origin story of that because i feel like for the conjuring fans and the horror fans we're kind of owed that you know what i mean we, it was announced it was supposed to happen it got shelved with the whole warner brothers discovery merger um and now we're kind of here with the next it looks like chapter in the conjuring universe uh, a, a tv show for max yeah, I, now, now that we're diving a little bit deeper into it and my mind can start thinking about these things, it would be sick. Like if I was, you know, in those production meetings, you know, getting that early script writing, if they wanted an overarching theme, we can call it a, a Valak Electric Boogaloo 2, um, the battle to destroy the Warrens. Um, so that... Keep it going. You know, Valak, <laughs> because obviously Lorraine and Valak be, be fighting. Um, that that would be pretty sick. Um HBO Max yeah, sponsored the, event right there. Yeah. <laughs> Lorraine Warren versus Valak. Electric Boogie. Main event, bro. AT&T right. Stadium. Yeah, it's going to be better than Jake Paul and uh, Mike Tyson. <laughs> oh, dude, you're not even ready for the forces that are about to meet in the middle of that boxing ring. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but it, I, I think there's so much potential you can do with this. Like, And there was... There was things. I mean, now, especially with, of course, Lyarona is involved with the Conjuring universe, oh, you know, and like that was just kind of like its own thing. They're kind of modeling that after a demon as well, um, and kind of, you know, like so. There's like you could even bring in urban legends if you wanted to, if they're if they're doing that in that aspect. Of course, uh, we we find that out in Lyarona when we see the priest carry the Annabelle doll, and that's how the all tied in. The priest was kind of all tied in with everything. So. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot you can do. You can expand. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more Annabelle cases out there other than the ones that we've seen already. Um, and I was telling the audience, obviously, for entertainment purposes, all these stories are hella dramatized for, you know, for, like I said, entertainment purposes. So, you know, there's going to be some truth to the story, you know, probably like these characters and whatnot. But like what you see on screen is not exactly what happened. You know, it's they got to make you entertained somehow, scare you, keep you on your edge of your seat, all that fun stuff. Yeah, I mean, just follow the uh, Texas Chainsaw inspired by true events. Like, that didn't really happen. No, it was just inspired by true events. Like, yeah. and it's and it's inspired by an actual serial killer, mostly Ed Gein. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's Ed Gein, but it's uh, you take his story and just. But I wouldn't doubt, and then in, in in Texas, a lot of people like that on going off highways like that. It's, you know, you're talking about you know the strangers. I wouldn't doubt in Texas people go missing all the time because of highways they go off and then. They go to someone's house and then they never seen again. Like that can actually probably happen because there's so much land out there. Like people can go missing and wouldn't even know. It's the seventies, baby. It's a lot harder to pe for people to go missing nowadays. Well, nowadays, yeah. I mean, there's so much technology. Tracking devices in our pocket. They're fucking satellites and everything, man. But got yeah, tracking on my on my on my body. It's a lot harder to go missing, but ain't, it still happens. That ain't gonna stop them from killing you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, death is inevitable, right? <laughs> As we nice learn. Actually, we've seen what a modern-day Texas Chainsaw Massacre would look like when he kills everyone on that bus. <laughs> that's what this world would look like today in a modern-day Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, that's another film I have not watched. It's not worth watching. Just watch that one. Just watch the one bus scene, and then that's all you need to watch for the entire movie. Yeah. That's the best part of the whole movie. Um, Well, Sammy... uh. It's been a while since you and I sat here, chatted it up about haunt, about horror, um, and I'm pretty, there's a lot we're gonna talk about, a lot we we have to talk about, a lot we need to catch up with with you, get your reactions on a lot of things, um, and I know you weren't scripted to officially appear on today. Uh, I, I had miscommunicated some stuff like midway through commercial or the song break. We were just like texting away about things and stuff, but you, you came on. 
I appreciate it. Um, next week, what day are we next, doing? You tell me. I told you I'm free Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. All right. You tell me. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. 6.30 p.m. 6.30 p.m. Live and in color. Live and in color. The return, full episode from start to finish of Sammy. Yes. Whatever questions you guys have, ask me. Because have I thought about anything related to foreign haunts in the last four months? Probably not, but I'll have an answer. So have be be ready. I, on the other hand, uh, I I just have that's part of who I am and what I have to do and what I like to do. So I have to keep informed with all that stuff. But hey, I know there's a lot of stuff involving Midsummer Scream that you probably want to talk about too. There's probably things you've been seeing on the the the, the Instagram. Uh, good old good old Rick West. Uh, I heard he uh, wants to come on the show, man, and talk about some stuff. So we're going to have to schedule something with that for Mindless Horror pretty soon. Good old Rick West interview, our yearly one. Yeah, it's a yearly tradition. Exci- always excited to sit and chat with Rick because uh, we, we obviously all love Midsummer Scream. And it's been going for a few years now, so always excited to dive in. Um, and, and, like... The, the one the one thing top of mind before I, I dip out in terms of Midsummer Scream, and we can obviously dive more into this next week. I'm super excited for the panel that they're doing um, where John Birdie is going to be on it, Jacob, a friend yes. of the channel um, from, from Home Haunt. From Ted Doherty's going to be on it too. Right, Ted, another, if, you, if you've been a longtime fan of the channel, we had him back on in 20... Pandemic? Was maybe it, 2020. It was early 2020. I think it was before the pandemic was even announced. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think it was end of 2019, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it might have been because it was like the we 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 tried to get him. We booked him, I think, around slower seasons, so we can he had more flexibility. Yeah, because we went and supported him in February of 2020 at the Hauntex. Hauntex, correct. Because he did like a whole like his whole career from like when he was a fan to where he is today, and that was really cool to look at. Yeah, it was a cool. And that's where we also met Deets, another friend of the channel. Yeah, same same, same day, 2020. Wow, what a year, huh? Yeah, and that was right before the pandemic. Fun story about that before I dip out is I remember me and Tony were obviously communicating prior to going like, hey, things are on the rise. What are your thoughts? Should we do it? Should we not? And we're like, yeah, let's do it. And I was like, all right, cool. Well, like in the interest of making sure we both don't get sick, I was like, let me go get my emergency at Target. There's a target near where Tony lives. We gotta get some elderberry. Like, let's just make sure we go fully dived in and have our immune system as best as we can, um, just to be cautious. But yes, excited to dive in. Six thirty next week. Yeah. Be here or be square. Nights of Horror Radio, ladies and gentlemen. Sammy, thank you for. You're gonna see Sammy hopefully a lot more this summer. So stay tuned for that. It's gonna be great. Follow us on all of our social media medias and on our YouTube page. We look forward to it. When we come back, more horror news with myself. Uh, Sammy, you have yourself a great one, and uh, we'll see you next week, buddy.
Welcome to the pit, baby. That was weaponized. Welcome to the pit. We just had Sammy on the show before that break. And, uh, you know, it was great to catch up with Sammy, man. We haven't talked and I mean, we text here and there, but we haven't talked like that in a few, a little bit. And uh, he's looking great. Uh, he's excited. I just, I just uh, texted him right now. He's super excited to already come back on next week. Had a lot of fun doing the little segment that we did with him. Um, kind of, you know, dust off the rust a little bit. Uh, I know he's been a busy man, so I can't wait to have him back on for the entire episode next week. Right here, next Tuesday, 6.30 p.m., right here on Twitch, Nights of Horror Radio. Looking forward to that. David Howard Thornton. That guy is just the B-movie serial killer, man. He's involved with everything. He is Art the Clown from Terrifier and Terrifier 2. He was the Grinch in um, You're a Mean One, which was a uh, horror Grinch movie. He played the Grinch, and now he's taking on a new endeavor. Now, if you guys didn't know this, at the start of 2024, Steamboat Willie went public domain. And at the start of 2024, so many Steamboat Willie projects got announced. Along with all that gotten announced was the uh, Steamboat Willie-inspired horror movie called Screamboat. And now it's just being confirmed by Bloody Disgusting that David Howard Thornton will be playing the killer mouse himself. And Screamboat. The description goes as follows. A mis mischievous mouse stalks a group of New Yorkers on a late night ferry ride in the Steamboat Willie expired horror movie Screamboat. And Terrifier's David Howard Thornton will be playing the killer mouse. Super excited for that. David Howard Thornton, you know, I know the Grinch movie didn't get very good reviews, but David Howard Thornton is just killing it with these roles. I'd love to see what he does next. I can't wait to see what he does next. Uh, I'm very much a huge fan of him. There was a Halloween Depot that they had him at um, at um, at Halloween Depot on Southgate, and I remember uh, Rob got to go to that one, and Rob was super cool and super nice enough to get us a autograph picture from David Howard Thornton uh, that I have framed, and it's on my wall over there. Uh, so I have a Terrifier framed picture autographed and everything so that was super nice of rob to do that and rob got us some incredible footage at the time and rob we got to look about bringing this back this summer hopefully we could probably do some more fun with that one uh but at the time we were doing a horror icon mashup show where we would take two horror famous horror icons and see who would win in a fight um and i would have to say that you know it's, it's so cool that um we have something memorabilia wise of david howard thornton so i'm excited to see what he does with this steamboat willie project is it going to be great probably not but you know what these beat movies are not meant to be great they're meant to be entertaining you know some of the the most terrible b movies ended up being some of the biggest movies in general look at the fucking look at um look at fucking what was that one movie the, the room that room is that movie's terrible and now it's one of the biggest most iconic movies of all time they even made a fucking a biopic about it with fucking based around the book that the the one guy wrote you know which was another great movie so all right where's all my saw fans at saw 11 coming out later this year or next year i think they got postponed again i think it got postponed with the the date change but anyway saw 11 is coming soon within the next year and co-writer marcus uh dunston Teases that the 11th movie is angry and armed with something new to say. Uh, that is impressive um, because I thought Saw 10 gave that vibe, especially with what everything that went down in Saw 10. Um, you know, it's, it's insane. So we're getting it next year, September 26th, 2025, uh, with Saw X director Kevin uh, Gratrut. Gratrut, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I, I apologize. Um, and he says right now they're writing the Saw 11 script and Kevin is returning to direct. He continues to say that's one where it's got something new to say and it's angry. So I'm excited to see what that newness is to say about that. In Saw 10, we saw Jigsaw go after a group of people who were committing scams, saying that they can cure their cancer, cure their treatment. Didn't go that way. Jigsaw found out the truth and he immediately turned it into a game. This was one movie where... 
actually every single person that was involved in that game, you did not care if they died because they were all scumbags in their own way, and you were aiming for Jigsaw to win this one, in a sense. Also it took place in Mexico, so it was new stomping grounds for Jigsaw, and I was curious to see how that was going to work out, how they were going to get Jigsaw over to Mexico, and I think they did it so well with the story. Saw 10, uh, you know, I think was one of my favorites in the franchise since I, w- I would say Saw 3 or 4. Um, because they kind of lost me, even though I kind of liked them for their traps and their own certain things. But story-wise, it kind of started going places, and then Tobin Bell was just not in it. It was just his voice to see Jigsaw return on screen and to kind of make this movie in between 1 and 2. That was a lot of fun, so I can't see where they continue to go with 11. I think they're going to still be in Mexico for this one, so it might pick up right after 10. Uh, We know we saw Hoffman at the end of the the post credit scene of Saw 10, so... Is Hoffman going to be uh, making his return in Saw 11 to see how that partnership kind of started and to see how uh, Amanda got thrown back into the games in Saw 2? A lot to break down with Saw, but I'm excited to see where it all goes in the future. This was a bit of uh, breaking news coming in on Monday, and it got released uh, on TikTok. They announced it, uh, Warner Brothers, and that is Practical Magic 2 is happening with it looks like Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman are in talks of returning as well. Never seen the original Practical Magic, uh, but it was a huge deal when this was getting announced. A lot of buzz uh, surrounding this film, a lot of people talking about it. Sandra Bullock, Nicole Kidman, uh, I'm assuming play witches in this movie. Never seen it. Uh, Might give it a watch. Came out in 1998, the original. So now you go all these years later uh, to do a sequel, and I'm excited to see where they take the sequel. Uh, a lot to to pick on on that one, and I cannot wait to see uh, what they go. I gotta watch the original first though. Don't know what the original is even about. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot to uh, to say about that one. But uh, I think it's cool that they're gonna get Sandra and Nicole to come back, especially where they are in their careers. I mean, it's from where they were when they made this movie to where they are now. I mean, they are fucking stars. Do a backflip. I can't do a backflip in my chair. <laughs> if I could, I would though. But it's going to be cool to see uh, them return if they do return, uh, you know, to see both of them. It's like they haven't really aged much, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, should be fun for all the Practical Magical, Practical Magical, Practical Magic fans. Practical Magic 2 on its way really soon. This was really cool now. I thought this was really cool. So, um, Syndicate Collectibles, never heard of them, but I think it's really cool. Um the Army of Darkness Chainsaw Hand Prop Replica is now available for pre-order on the Big Bad Toy Store. And it's a life-size wearable prop replica that comes with a realistic chainsaw sound effects and measures to 28 inches long. Um, for all those people who love to do the cosplay or who love to collect, I, I'm even looking at probably buying this because I'm a huge fan of Ash and the uh, Evil Dead series. But to get Ash's chainsaw from Army of Darkness and to actually be able to finally wear it I know a lot of people make those. I know there's other probably people that sell them. But to have an actual prop replica of it, I, I actually might get in on this and buy this. This looks really cool. Um, and, I, and I like I said, I'm a huge Ash fan. But for all the people in the cosplay community, I've seen a few people cosplay as Ash at, con- at you know conventions, at Midsummer Scream and stuff. This might be perfect for your cosplay right here. This looks very realistic to detail, the blood, everything. Check it out. Uh, it looks really cool. Syndicatecollectibles.com. You can find the uh, pictures for this right now. I'll even leave uh, the link right here in um, the chat. Um, so that way you guys can go check it out yourself. I think this looks really cool. I would probably buy one. I probably am going to buy one. Don't know where I'm going to put it. But who knows. Looks like that was not the white site. White site. I can't talk today. Let me get the actual site for you guys right here. I'm looking for the site. It's like I don't have a fucking computer in front of me. There it is. Syndicate Collectibles. There you go. Check them out. It looks like they got a lot of stuff. They got Killer Collins from Outer Space stuff? All oh, the popcorn gun, huh? I have that. 
They got Dio stuff, too. It looks like they got a lot of collectible items there. It's really cool. Okay. Syndicate collectibles. I'm going to remember that one for sure. Because uh, for those who know me, I am a collector. All right. The last bit of haunt news or horror news we have for you today. A fan favorite film coming back remastered in 3D for the first time ever for its 15th anniversary Coraline will be hitting theaters this August for a brand new 3D remastered in theaters around the world. Tim Burton's Coraline, man. Was that Tim Burton? I'm assuming that was Tim Burton. I think that was Tim Burton. But Coraline, man, that, that movie was that movie was something, wasn't it? That movie was a, a, a scary one. And I remember when we were in doing the, the COVID year, you know, we talked about COVID earlier. And, you know, when we were doing, um, you know, the Roblox haunts, we came across a haunt that was a Coraline maze. And it was probably one of the scariest mazes I've ever seen. I think even in maze treatment, someone made a Coraline-inspired uh, maze, which I've always thought, and I think a lot of people as well have thought, that Coraline can work as a maze. Coraline is terrifying as a maze. So, I don't know, man. It, it looks promising. Uh, I can't wait to go back and rewatch Coraline in 3D this time. And there's probably a lot of things that you can do with 3D. I, I don't know how long they've been working on this one for, but I'm excited to see what, what 3D... Uh, technology they bring together ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching today's episode of nights of horror radio tune in next week as we sit with sammy we catch up with the haunt realm with sammy we catch up with midsummer scream with sammy and we cover all the latest horror and haunt news here on nights of horror radio until next week let gentlemen thank you so much that is the end of the news portion of the channel we got one last song for you and then we're off the air for this week and that is Face of Death by Ravage Realm. Hope you guys enjoyed today's show. I'll see you guys next week, Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. The boys are back and we're looking for trouble. I'll see you guys next week.